In November of 2020, Chicago's WTTW debuted a new special called Chicago from the Air, narrated by Jeffrey Bayer and produced by Eddie Griffin. Utilizing drones and the skills of local pilots, Chicago from the Air gave viewers a unique look at places many of us know but have never seen from above. Jeffrey Bayer and Eddie Griffin are back with a new production called Beyond Chicago from the Air, which debuts on Wednesday, December 1st at 7.30 p.m., and I was fortunate enough to talk with Bear and Griffin about this new project. I'm Tommy Henry, and this is the Chicago History Podcast. Chicago is one of America's mightiest cities. But have you ever wondered how it ended up way out here in the middle of the country? The story starts with waterways. Early mariners from beyond the horizon followed water routes to this place in the middle of the country, drawn by the possibility of untapped natural wealth. To tell this epic story, we take to the skies where we can see the big picture. Beyond Chicago's borders, beyond our present time, beyond Chicago from the air. Gentlemen, welcome. Glad to be here. Hi, Tommy. Good to see you again. So I, I got to ask you, uh, how long after the first Chicago from the Air did you guys start work on Beyond Chicago from the Air? Um, well, actually, kind of right away. Um, I think we finished the first one. Uh, well, it aired in November. Um, but even when we knew that we were going to do a second one, or even when we thought that we wanted to do a second one, we knew that we, we had to include some fall colors um, and, and then anticipating that the show again would air, you know, this time right now, we weren't gonna be able to do the fall colors in 2021. So we went back, um, we went out uh, on the road in, in fall of 2020, 2020 um, and went to Star Rock and got fall colors. So right away, so that we were shooting the second show before the, the first show had, you know, finished editing. That was one of the questions that I had because you had such great um, uh, you know, all the leaves changing. And I thought, did they just shoot that now? And they're like, you know, up to the wire on editing. Um, uh, it looked really amazing. And uh, Jeffrey, I'm not sure uh, what your fan club calls themselves, uh, but for all the bear heads out there, there's a great shot of Jeffrey on the back of a, a paddle boat that you all have to look forward to. Paddle wheel, is like a steamboat, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, there yeah. you go. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty great. Um, in the script, I originally wrote paddle boat, and, and Eddie uh, rightly noted that a, a paddle boat is like that little thing uh, with for two people that's made of plastic that you're pedaling, and, uh, and, I, and, and I didn't want to uh, give the wrong impression, so uh, I, I've, been, uh, I've been corrected. It's, it, it's a paddle wheel. Uh, I'm, I'm sure the paddle nerds out there uh, probably would not have been happy with that yeah. uh, oversight, so that's why it's important to have a good producer like yeah. Eddie. Absolutely. Um, one of the earliest shots is of uh, rock climbers at the Mis uh, Mississippi Palisades State Park. Uh, yet I didn't see either of you on the ropes. What's up with that? <laughs> it's dangerous. Like, you, didn't work there. <laughs> you didn't recognize me up there. I think it was supposed to be in the helmet. I, yeah. I didn't. I kept. Uh, I kept. You know, zooming in and, and thinking I, it might be him. I don't know, but uh, yeah. Um, honestly, the the entire project is like a beautiful postcard. Um, of all the places to which I, I'm too lazy to drive. Um, I, no, actually, it, it really kind of inspired me to get out more um, and, and see more of the state. I feel like sometimes I get a little too uh, sedentary, I guess, just kind of circulating around Chicago. Was that kind of the goal with this? Yeah, we had, uh, you know, we kind of tapped out um, Chicago land uh, the first time around in the first show. Um, so we knew that we needed to get out a little bit further and explore some of Illinois. Um, and, you know, we tried to make Illinois look as exotic as possible uh, by getting out to the Mississippi River, getting out to Palisades State Park, um, showing rock climbing um, and, you know, getting into Missouri, into Hannibal, Missouri. 
Um, we just wanted, we didn't want to make a travel log show and say, you know, here is, uh, you know, this, you, you must follow this exact path for a tour. Um, but we need to get out a, a little bit further and kind of show you some things that we don't normally cover. Um, and if you are more based uh, in like metropolitan Chicago, that maybe you don't know about Cahokia Mounds um, near St. Louis and Collinsville. Um, so we tried to get out to show a little bit more of the state um, than we normally can cover. You guys have uh, these great transitions with giant yellow letters that show the different cities, and then you've got smaller little white um, uh, lines at the bottom. How many different locations are featured in Beyond Chicago from the Air? Um, I mean, if locations, I guess, the, the defined by um, you know where we shot. I mean, there's probably a good forty, um, you know. Um, uh, you know, probably 35 to 40 different um, like places where our cameras went. Um, and then we, you know, we, we try to encomp encompass or, or incorporate much more of, uh, you know, the surrounding areas of some of the places that we went to. So we may have, you know, we may go out to Northwest Illinois, um, but we spent, you know, five or six uh, uh, specific locations along the way. You got uh, Soaring Badger, the company, uh, the drone company from the first Chicago from the air is back again. Uh, Soaring Badger, for you listeners who aren't familiar with the name, uh, has done a lot of work around Chicago. They do a lot of the uh, One Chicago shows. Um, uh, Chicago PD, for example, uses their uh, drone efforts a lot. Um, how involved were you with uh, picking the shots that they used or did they just go out and kind of shoot based on areas and then give you like a suitcase full of hard drives at the end of the day? Yeah, we, we have, you know, we have a script and we have an idea and I sort of have an idea of how the shots were, are going to need to work together. And so we come up with like a shot list, um, which is really kind of more of, of, of a wish list because you know, we don't know what it's gonna look like or what the elements are gonna be uh, for flying the drone until Soaring Badger gets on site. So from when, you know, when they arrive, it's all their show. Um, Colin, the director of photography, um, you know, they've, you know, they have to check in with the FAA, they have to make sure that they're, in, you know, they're flying under permission and you know, that they're not in restricted areas um, or that they are obviously maneuvering around objects, buildings, trees, um, whatnot that are, um, you know, that are, we'd love to get a shot coming from this way, but if there's something that's going to interrupt it or cause danger um, or, you know, a, 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 an obstacle for the drone to get around, then that's all them. That's Colin and Soren Badger and they maneuver and they figure out a way to kind of get what we need to tell the story. Um, so that's, you know, there's a, it's a lot of uh, back and forth um, and a lot of great collaboration. And that's why those guys are outstanding. There was a shot at, at uh, Bemis Woods that uh, kind of threw me off. Actually, I, Eddie, I may have told you this. After the first Chicago from the era, I was like, well, I got to get a drone. I got to get good at this because this looks so cool and I want to shoot more of Chicago. And, you know, um, but man, these guys are good. There's a shot uh, at, at Bemis Woods where the drone kind of follows somebody on a zip line. And I just kept looking at it thinking, oh, boy. I, I'd never be able to do that. I don't think I have that kind of dexterity. So, well, Colin has several different drones, uh, Soaring Badger, right? So they have a um, kind of a really big platform drone that can go very high and can shoot, um, you know, big sweeping vistas and things like that. And I, I, I don't know the technology, but I presume it's got a lot more functionality and stability and so forth. Um, but then he's got a smaller drone. And then Eddie, what's the, uh, it's like a racing drone or something, right? That where he actually wears goggles. Yeah. It's a FPV first person view. Um, and that is, you know, if you've, it's like a video game, you know, you have the maneuverability of, uh, it's first person, but you feel like you're flying like a character in a video game. Um, or if you see, you know, ESPN does those, uh, you know, it's like a sport drone racing, um, to where it's, you can get into places where the bigger drones and even the medium-sized drone can't get to. Yeah. And so when you see a drone crew, you know, it's kind of a multiple person operation, you know, because there's a, there's a pilot, usually there's a pilot and a camera operator, um, much like you would be shooting from a helicopter. You'd have a pilot and a camera operator and, and sometimes a third person, a spotter. Um, but with these FPV drones, you, you know, and, and, and so the pilot 
And I believe that the pilot and the camera uh, operator both have their own contr uh, controls and they're kind of wearing them over their neck. Uh, it looks like an iPad over their neck uh, and a and control device. Um, and they're sort of looking down at the screen. Um, but with this small FPV drone, they're wearing goggles and, and um, uh, flying right along like the, the pilot and the camera person are one and the same. Um, we, we used it, he used it to fly literally inside and through um, the Edith Farnsworth house in uh, the glass house by Mies van der Rohe down in um, Aurora, Illinois. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm guessing he used it for the, the Palisades shot. There's a shot where he flies through a railroad bridge um, that, that looks kind of first person to me. Um, so there were places, and this is part of just something I've always said with both of these shows from the beginning is that, and, and certainly was part of, of Eddie's early concept, you know, there are a lot of these kind of over Tuscany, over Wisconsin that are shot with a helicopter and they're just kind of, they're like video wallpaper, you know, they're, they're or screensavers. I mean, they're big, gorgeous, beautiful, sweeping, slow moving shots of farm fields and beautiful countryside and shoreline. And those are great, but, but I always envisioned and wanted this personally, as I thought of it, to be more like daredevil flying and, and feeling like a bird and doing things you, you just always dreamed you may, or maybe always dreamed you could do, but you know, you can't because you don't, you, you can't fly, you know, so that, that, that's why, um, you know, we wanted to, you know, use these kinds of, of shots uh, in the show as well. Yeah, and I think that comes across. I mean, um, uh, again, that's part of the reason that I, I spent a bunch of money that I, I probably shouldn't have uh, getting all the drone stuff, but uh, but I really enjoy it. Now, um, they have to be licensed to do all the stuff that they do, but uh, were there moments where they handed the controls over to you guys and said, have at it, or they kind I, of kept you, know, you at arm's length? Yeah, I asked many times, but uh, I don't I don't want to be responsible or, or be on the hook for crashing one of those things. Yeah, that's uh, that stuff is uh, is super expensive. Uh, Jeffrey, you um, obviously narrate the project, but you wrote it as well. Um, while you were researching, I'm sure you didn't have all that in your head. While you were doing your research and, and collecting all the information, was there anything that surprised you uh, about the places that you ended up using? All kinds of things. You know, we we talk about. But that, that's the other element of the show. In addition to the visuals, is that um, unlike those kind of video wallpaper shows, we wanted this to be um, full of story and stories. Um, and you know, the for 25 years, the the thing that that I've always kind of gotten a thrill out of with these programs is is what I call the quote "I never knew that" phenomenon, which is you know you've you've driven past something all your life, never really gave it two thoughts, um, but then you're surprised to find that um, there's a story there that you, you never even dreamed of. So certainly Cahokia Mounds, I mean, just this stunning fact. So Cahokia Mounds is a Mississippian, uh, a city that, by the Mississippian people uh, down by St. Louis um, that's about a thousand years old. And, um, and it disappeared about 300 years after it was established. So it hasn't been there for like 700 years. But the, the idea that there was a city in Southern Illinois, the size of London at the same time, a thousand years ago, is a mind blowing fact. I mean, Henry the first was on the throne in London, you know, ruling over um, a country in a, in a city the same size as this um, indigenous people's city in Southern Illinois. You know, we just don't think of, uh, because, because we've been guilty of, um, so much storytelling being so Eurocentric, you know, we, we, you don't think of the fact that there were these big, sophisticated civilizations uh, on this continent and even in what is now Illinois a thousand years ago. Um, so that was really great to, um, to look at. I, I, I um, have written uh, some about the uh, um, Black Hawk War in other programs that I've done, but never really got as deeply into it. And it's, Again, it's fascinating and tragic. Um, so there's a lot of Native American content in the show. Um, and then just, you know, one thing I thought, you know, you get a hundred miles out of side of Chicago and you're in farm country. And we in Chicago and in the suburbs and in the metropolitan area, 
I don't think very many people think about the fact that, you know, we're embedded in farm country. You don't think about farming, you know? So it was, I used the word exotic. I mean, it's funny to think of farming as exotic, but if you're a city dweller or a suburbanite, um, farming is something you may not know or think anything about. So I really wanted to include, you know, uh, going out and looking at farm fields and not just farm fields, but Eddie, you know, did a great job finding some a family that's been on the land for five generations. Uh, I learned that soybean, uh, Illinois is the top soybean state in, um, in the country. Uh, we filmed a wind farm. That was amazing. It took me a long time on Google Maps to try to figure out. I, I wanted to figure out how big it was so I could put that in the script. And it's, you know, it was really hard to like finally you know, get under the satellite view and, and kind of calculate is 25 square miles of, of, of wind generation uh, and learning about wind generation in, in Illinois. Um, past wind farms on I-55, you know, on road trips all the time, but oh my God, seeing the drone flying past those giant blades of the wind turbines, you know, it was, it was really, really, really thrilling. I have friends who are uh, farmers and run orchards. Um, matter of fact, uh, not too far from DeKalb is one of them. And one of the nice things in the past year of craziness is that they saw more people who seem to come in from farther away to do apple picking and to kind of walk um, in the cornfields and, and kind of do all that kind of back to nature stuff. So when you talk about, um, you know, how it's a bit exotic. I, I think it's, it's good for people, you know, even from places, you know, in Naperville, which you talk about in beyond Chicago from the air to go a little bit farther, you know, you can go a handful of miles out and, and see much more of this amazing state we have, uh, which is, is fantastic. Um, yeah, the lost city of Cahokia is, um, I think one of the coolest things in the show, uh, again, for listeners, there's a great overlay which shows the mounds. I think you say um, there are 80 of the original 120 uh, that still exist. And there's this great overlay um, that shows what the city likely looked like back then and uh, breathtaking. I mean, really very cool. So thank you for that. Um, all right. So, by the way, I should credit give credit where credit's due. We did not create that overlay. That's actually something that's a, a virtual reality feature. If you go down and visit Cahokia, they've developed this amazing virtual reality, and and they uh, lent that to us to uh, share in our program. So, uh, yes, yeah, it's you, extremely. You do cool. actually, yeah, you do mention that in the program. So, you know, I don't, I don't think anyone can claim you were. You were we have a great art it. department, phenomenal, but they didn't do that. So you've both worked on the uh, Great Chicago Quiz Shows. Uh, I have a, uh, what may be a super easy quiz question for you based on one of the locations that you visited. One of the areas highlighted is the old train uh, roadhouse in Aurora. Uh, what Chicago Sports Great used to have a restaurant there? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I, can I answer? Uh, Walter Payton. Sure. For 500, that was, please. That was way too easy, wasn't it? Eddie was like, come on. We, we wanted to include that as part of the, the background in the history on uh, what's now Two Brothers uh, Brew Pub. Um, so we wanted to include a little bit about Walter and the Roundhouse. Um, but, you know, for time, we just kind of kept it moving. But, you know, I was hoping to find some photos of Walter, you know, when they had kind of uh, uh, reconstructed the, the, or repurposed the Roundhouse um, into his restaurant. But, um, you know, maybe it maybe deleted scenes in the DVD. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, even for a history uh, nerd like me, there was a lot to learn. I knew very little about the Joliet Arsenal, so it was cool to see that old uh, picture of that, um, other than getting stuck in all the Arsenal road closures over the past seemingly 20 years. Every time I drive that way, it's closed off. Um, was there anybody that said no to letting you film uh, in their area? Uh, of course. I mean, there are there are some places that are not geared towards publicity. You know, they're not interested in being part of it because whatever their their main purpose is of a business or a site or a location is, is to keep people from coming. You know, they don't want people. They don't want to, you know, kind of let the secret out um, for whatever reason. And so we run into that. Um, 
um, you know, from time uh, and again, and, and sometimes there, it just doesn't work out because, um, you know, maybe a, a site is under construction and they'd love to be in the show and they'd love to be featured, but they're redoing their front facade and they, you know, they'd rather not, you know, us come with, with drone cameras and, and film them while they've got a tarp hanging over their side. Um, you know, so that's, that's all part of, of uh, the production is to kind of uh, navigate through locations, um, get them in, you know, on board to the show, um, and then kind of troubleshooting if they are uncomfortable, because, you know, again, drones, there are um, some security um, issues that we need to, you know, to, to ensure that we're going to, you know, not going to crash into someone's property or hurt anyone below. And so, you know, and, and sometimes someone may just say that, you know, that risk is not worth it, um, you know, because, you know, for, for whatever reason, but for the most part, you know, everyone was excited uh, to, to be featured in the show and we're really helpful. Um, we tried to do a lot of um, you know, rather than just flying over the farm field and getting beautiful shots of the farm, you know, we had the farmers out there running the equipment, running tractors. And so we tried to, you know, not necessarily stage, but try to make sure that when we were there, there was really good action going on below. The thing I couldn't believe, I'm not involved in the actual production, uh, man, you know, managing all the production. I, I kind of hear about things. And we, a, there was a freight uh, railroad that actually ran a freight train for us. It, it, they, 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 they hooked it up and ran it out on the tracks for us. It wasn't actually going anywhere. Uh, I thought that was kind of mind blowing that they, uh, they were so cooperative and helpful and, and we didn't have to, you know, hover in the air for hours waiting for a freight train to come by. I think that's pretty nice, but really, when you say Jeffrey Bear and Eddie Griffin, <laughs> stuff happens around Chicago. Uh, so you guys talk cemeteries, you guys talk Ida B. Wells, uh, George Pullman. There's even a joke about beach volleyball, which made me laugh out loud. Uh, so nice job there. Uh, I'm sure there are things on tap for a third installment. Yes, and before you answer uh, that question, I have a title suggestion, Beyond the Valley of Chicago from the Air. No, it may need some work. Uh, we're thinking more like tropical islands from the air. You know, we could we could use a nice uh, long winter vacation, go down to Hawaii, go down to the Caribbean, and you know, shoot uh, drone footage down there. I, I like your suggestion. Let's do it. That would explain why WTTW has already started uh, their uh, email and and uh, mail onslaught to uh, get me to renew my uh, my donations. So. <laughs> Uh, Beyond Chicago from the Air will premiere Wednesday, December 1st at 7.30 p.m. on WTTW and eventually on WTTW.com. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for your time and also for your love of Chicago history. Thank you, Tommy. Well, Thanks for having us. It's our pleasure. And if I could add a, a, just a postscript to that, um, uh, it will be online. Uh, the program will be viewable online Um and streaming uh, the same day it debuts. Um, and there is a huge website that goes along with this program that has all kinds of extra features, including a really fun behind the scenes video of um, what it was like to film on that paddle wheel boat uh, that, you, that you mentioned. So that's definitely worth looking at at uh, wttw.com slash beyond Chicago. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye, Tommy.